And hello everybody, good afternoon and welcome. My name is Paul Grogan and today we're going to be doing a live solo playthrough uh, of Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth. Uh, if you are watching this live and you can hear me and see me okay, please let me know in the chat if everything is working fine. Uh, I'm just going to have to adjust these settings again. Apologies for this. For those regular viewers, you will know that these chat windows are not automatically updating like they said they should. Uh, and right, if you're watching this on Facebook, hello, I'm just going to do the introduction again. No, it seems to be working. Graham says can hear you and see you okay. But the chat viewer is not working. I wonder why. So yeah, I can't get the chat window up. Uh, apologies for this. Bear with us a minute. Um, I've recently switched from the public test version of the XSplit software back to the uh, back to the normal version and this doesn't seem to be working it's not picking it up so I'm not sure why let's go in select it again no nope, it's not working right okay so I need the chat up so talk amongst yourselves on the chat I am going to uh, well I'm just going to switch across to this first and see if the chat is working here ah the chat's working here it's just not working in the other window. Right, so I'm going to stick with this one uh, because the chat is working. Josh is here and Graham is here. Thank you very much. And if you're watching this live on Facebook, please pop a message in the Facebook chat. Um, and that should appear in the window in the bottom left. Um, yeah, because the Facebook chat hasn't been, it stopped working yesterday. They've told me it's fixed, so we will see. Anyway, Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. This is a game from Fantasy Flight Games, one to five players. I'm going to be playing it solo today because there's only me here. Loki, uh, my cat, will be joining me at some point because he's due for his afternoon cuddles. Um, but I'm actually going to be playing it with two characters. Like a lot of these solo games, I feel that they work better with multiple characters. And you can play multiple characters at once, so I'm going to be playing two characters. Now, I did a vote on the Board Game Trading in Chat UK Facebook group of which characters I said you should use. And the most votes came in for random. So I have randomly chosen Aragorn and Bilbo. And then thanks to Graham, I've randomly chosen uh, which roles they are assigned. So Aragorn has been assigned the role of musician. So he's got his trombone with him. Uh, and Bilbo has been assigned the role of hunter. What are the six different roles? There are captain, which is what Aragorn is it's suggested you play as when you first play it. Berevor is the pathfinder. Bilbo is the burglar. Elena is the musician. Gimli is the guardian. And Legolas is the hunter. But again, you can play any role with any character. And what's interesting about this game is you can actually switch roles between the games. So if I don't like these, uh, I can switch them out. Now, I have played this game once. In fact, I've done another video for this a while back, but I have forgotten mostly how to play. And today has unfortunately run away with me. So I am going to be remembering as much as I can along the way. I am going to be referring to the Learn to Play guide along the way. So apologies in advance if I get a couple of things wrong. Turn on your Klingon subtitles just in case. Uh, and if, uh, if anybody spots anything afterwards, I will go in and add some annotations later on. But before we start, the music, by the way, is the app. I've got the music playing on the app. Um, I'm going to go through the characters just so as a reminder for me, but also if you haven't played the game, um, this will be useful for you. Am I going to, shall I zoom in a bit? Yeah, I'll zoom in a bit. And we're first going to talk about Aragorn. Uh, so Aragorn's stats, if that's what they're called, are Might 3, Wisdom 4, Agility 2, Spirit 2, Whip 3, right? Can take 5 fear and 5 damage before being eliminated, I think it's called. Uh, and can store a maximum of 4 inspiration. Inspiration counters will be placed on here, and I can have a maximum of 4 of them. Now, Aragorn's ability is when heroes scout during the rally phase, you and nearby heroes each reveal one additional card. I'm probably going to forget this, so I'm asking you to remind me. So when we scout during the rally phase, Aragorn and anybody near to him will get one additional card. Right. Now below the player board, we have a series of these cards and you can have a maximum of four prepared. Ah, Richard is here. Done the starter mission. We'll be starting the campaign proper on Friday. Uh, yeah, it's fun. I, I like it as well. Jeff's here as well. Thank you very much for joining in, Jeff. This is the thing. This, this is a game very, very similar to Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition that I have gone on record of saying I hated it and I thought it was an awful game. This one is similar, but I like it. It has a different resolution mechanism. It still has some of the same problems, but at the end of the day, I enjoy playing it. Um, that's the main thing, really, in games. So anyway, are they uh, are they skill cards? Yeah, skill cards. You can have a maximum of four prepared cards below your player board. 
Each character starts off with one depending on their role. So Aragorn's, because he's a musician, his starting card is at the end of your turn, you can discard this skill to prepare a song skill from your discard pile. So once I have cards in my discard pile, I can get rid of that to basically prepare one of those and I gain one inspiration. Now, Aragorn has three pieces of equipment with him. He has a sword, which is useful in combat for dealing hits. Travel garb, which increases my fear limit by one. And whenever I suffer face down damage, I can prevent one of it. Right. And he's also got a banner. After you or a nearby hero rests or guards, that hero gains one inspiration. Again, I'm going to have to remember these. But that is Aragorn. We now have Bilbo. Uh, Bilbo the Hunter, obviously. He can take seven fear. So he's a lot more uh, resilient to taking uh, terror or whatever it's called. But he can only take three damage because he's only a little bit with little legs. He can have six inspiration. Before you interact, look at the top card of your deck. If it is a card with an inspiration icon, gain one inspiration. But you can only equip one hand's worth of weapons. I'm not sure why that is. Oh, probably because he's little. So he can only equip, yeah. So he's having to use a dagger in two hands. So he's wearing a dagger, which is, um, uh, which is a weapon, not quite as good as the sword. Uh, and he's also got a cloak. Before you suffer fa uh, damage or... Terror, I think it's called. We'll check. Um, you may spend one inspiration to prevent one of that. And his starting skill is resourceful. After you prepare this skill, gain one inspiration. I assume that happens straight away because you do prepare it at the start of the game. And at the end of your turn, you may discard this skill to gain one inspiration or to scout one. Right, so that is my starting characters. Let's just zoom out a bit. There we go. Let's put the characters back over here. Uh, each character has a deck of 15 cards, but you take out the starting card and you put that below your player board. Um, and then the other 14 make up your deck. Um, and you're saying, uh, Oldie Brom is saying the cards are just small, the character board and everything. There is really no use to putting artwork on small cards. Yeah, they are small, but it does look nice. I mean, I do like cards with artwork, but I get what you're saying. They are a bit small. Um, Right, so we have Bilbo, we have the cards and everything else. Now, this is an app-driven game. If you don't like apps in games, then you're not going to like this game because it is heavily app-dependent. But I think we are ready to start. Now, the game comes with two rule books. We're going to be using the Learn to Play guide today because this should get us through scenario one. I do have the rules reference book handy if we need it. But we've done that, we've done that, we've prepared the roles, we've got the 14 cards... Select Embark in the app. Right, the next thing to do is to start the app. Right, so we have Bones of Arnor, which is the campaign. There's actually two campaigns available, and I haven't got the second one yet. That is a DLC add-on that you can buy. You don't need any extra physical components for that expansion. It uses all of the existing components. So, we're doing Bones of Arnor. Um, ancient kingdoms once spanned the realm of Arnor, kingdoms that now lay in ruin. The free people who still inhabit these lands are scattered, simple and few. Beyond their poorly patrolled borders, an unknown darkness gathers, and only a small band of ostracised rangers have taken notice of the threat. Halbarad, captain of the Northern Watch, requests your aid. A shadow is within the borders, forces gather outside the rangers' reach, and tales of unquieted dead begin to circulate anew. Select difficulty. We're going to play on um, normal setting. Uh, there is a hard mode, once you've played it before, but we're not going to do that. We're going to start on easy. Um, so you're saying you have this game on the radar, you love Imperial Assault, but it used small cards with items. Yeah, too small. That's why I got my glasses on. I actually can't see these cards now without my glasses. So select a save slot. Now I've actually got a few campaigns going. Oh, I've got four. Um, yeah, I'm probably, that's, that one's not going to carry on. Um, Paul and Vicky's on chapter five apparently okay let's let's go with this one and we're going to call this do i get to give it a name i will in a minute select heroes so we're going to select aragorn and bilbo okay select starting items now i think you can choose whatever items you want but i am using the ones that it suggests yeah i think you can choose whatever you want select party name and i'm going to call this live stream because this might be the first of many videos, we will see. 
Um, so this is not a sponsored video. Basically, I do a Patreon campaign which supports a lot of the content that I make. The next Patreon goal is to do more solo playthroughs. So if you want to see more videos like this, I'm doing two solo playthroughs this week and I'm probably going to do two next week. Um, and if I reach my next Patreon goal, then that will allow me to carry on making solo videos. So we will see if my Patreon campaign does well. I will continue to do these videos into 2020. Um, I'd like to carry on playing this game, but it's a case of taking time off my paid work. I should be doing paid work this afternoon and I'm not. Oh, we've got voice. Can you hear that? We can I'll feel it, but it is a darkness that rises slowly. It dwells among us, masked and unobtrusive. One must be paranoid to know it's there. Okay, no it's nice, but having watched other people's live streams when they do that, it's kind of a bit boring. So I'm going to I'm going to skip through it. Um, basically, there's been a rash of theft swept through Eridor. Uh, the significance of these thefts may seem small, but we've been called. To help out so yeah there's been lots of thefts here we go chapter one graham saying random items i'm not doing everything random oh richard says big box expansion planned for 2020 excellent okay well that, that'd be cool there is one little mini expansion that comes with it which i think is just extra figures um right there we go so we are ready to start we have pressed embark on the app um i mentioned support me on patreon if you like my content i've done that right Place starting tiles and tokens. So we follow the app's instructions. As I say, it's heavily app dependent. And we basically follow the thing and tell us what we should do. So a shadow in Eriador. Uh, basically, we're seeking a load of brigands. Select roles. So Aragorn is musician. Bilbo is hunter. Embark. Avoiding Nazgul's, assembling the Fellowship, and here we go. Somewhere amid this maze of dark thickets and steep gullies, the band of thieves now hides. Your direction is informed by a set of tracks from two days ago, and you can only guess the location of the thieves' lair. Now, although I've played this scenario like three or four times now, it is still enjoyable to play. You know the overall story, but some things are randomly generated, so it's going to be slightly different each time. Um, yeah. It's not like once you've played it once, you can't play it again. You just, you know the story, but you can play it again. Right, so the game comes with a whole host of tiles. Charlie's here, Matt's here. Hi, Charlie. Thank you very much. You've played the first three scenarios. Scenario four was quite cool, I think. I have played the first four before. So we're placing tile 302. Now, I've got to hunt through all of these tiles, which are slightly off camera. Um, I could have sorted them out a bit better, but I need tile 302. Where are we? 306, 208. It's probably the last one in the pile. Nope, 302. So 302A goes, we'll put it there. That's where it's telling me to put it. Continue. Right, if you cannot locate and enter the hideout by dark, the trail may be lost altogether. Place the heroes as indicated. So we start here. Uh, and each hero scouts two. Now, whenever you get the instruction to scout, what that means is you will draw the top X number of cards off your deck equal to whatever it says. Or, sorry, you'll reveal them. You don't draw them, you'll reveal them. Uh, then you will prepare one of them and you will put the other one. What do you do with the other one? Is it on top or the bottom of your deck? It's the same as in the rally phase, but this isn't actually the rally phase. Um, you can prepare one of them. You may prepare one. Um, after choosing whether or not you place your cards that were not prepared on the top or bottom of your deck in any order. Yeah, so that's actually really useful. And this is, as I say, it's the card system, which is why I like it uh, more than Mansions of Madness, which is just a dice rolling fest. So we've drawn Time of Need and Gift of Men. Um... So I'm actually going to take time of need and I'm going to put gift of men. I can put it on the top or the bottom of my deck. And it's the icons in the top left of the card that are important. So I'm going to put that on top of my deck because it works well with time of need. And I think I mentioned you can only have four prepared cards. Bilbo is also scouting. I don't get the bonus from Aragorn because this isn't in the rally phase. This is just 
and scouting two at the start, what have we got? We have precise strike and we have precise strike. Hmm, which of those do I want? I think, I think I'm gonna take precise strike and I'm actually gonna put the other one. This is interesting. Am I gonna be fighting anytime soon? If I am, I probably wanna put that on the top of my deck. But it's actually got um, a success icon in the top left. So I'm going to put it on the top of my deck anyway, which means whenever I do a test, I know that the top card is going to be uh, a success. Steve's here. Happy holidays to everyone. Not quite holidays, but yeah, I see what you mean. December. Holidays are coming for some people. Others will be sat here live streaming every day. I don't know who that would be. Right. What's next? Faint as a whisper, this area smells familiar. <laughs> Place a search token as indicated. So we put one of these search tokens on there. Nope, that's not a search token. You don't put that on there. That's not a search token. This is a search token. An old picket fence remains here, remnant of an age where this area was more settled. So again, these are slightly randomly generated and you can get to know once you've played it a few times, what's what. So this is a smell and this is an old picket fence. I think we definitely need to be examining fences. Place tile 100A as indicated, which I happen to leave on top. So that goes there. Uh, in the distance, a group of ragtag individuals close the doors of a stone tomb. Could this be your quarry, the thieves you are looking for? Place a person token. Okay. Oh, and 205A. And me, because it's been months since I've played, I've actually forgotten most of the stuff about this. But I do remember there was a band of thieves breaking into the tomb. 205A, which is this one. Uh, where's it going to go? Is it going in there? No, go in there. Yeah, there we go. Let's just turn this around a bit. So 205A. And 208A, which is an oddly shaped one. Is that this? Yes. Where's that going? That's going uh, there. There. That's it. Right. Exploration tokens. That's it. So these two areas here haven't been explored. So they get exploration tokens on them. Right, pausing to tighten your boots and adjust the weight of your gear, you take a breath before continuing on. Each hero tests spirit. Uh, we need one success and if we pass, we gain one inspiration. So the way that you do skill tests in this game is we're testing spirit. My Aragorn spirit is two, which means I reveal the top two cards of the deck and it is a test difficulty one, so all I need is one success. So I reveal the cards. I haven't drawn any successes. Now I could, because I've drawn, because I have my time of knee card in play. Um, I could, when you test, if you do not reveal any successes, which I didn't, you may discard this skill to convert all leaves into successes, which means I would pass, which means I would gain one inspiration. I don't think I want to. I think I'm going to keep hold of time of need because that'll be useful later on. So I'm, I'm going to choose not to use that, which means I failed the test, so I don't gain an inspiration. Bilbo, on the other hand, his spirit is three, so we reveal three cards. I hope you can see these icons. You can probably see it there. I know it's a bit small, but it's getting everything on screen. Uh, well, one, two, three. We've definitely passed. We got two successes, so we've passed. We gain an inspiration. What I might do next time is I might have another camera angle that is zoomed in on this bit a bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure I can do that now. Let's just bear with us a minute. I might try and do that. Right, overhead camera. Overhead camera is there. Copy it, paste it. Okay, so I have another overhead camera. Let's move it down below that. And then this overhead camera, I'm actually going to zoom in. Now, let's see if I can remember how you zoom in on, on X-Split. It's not that, it's that. And then I make it bigger. There we go. So is this going to work? Is this going to be useful? Ooh. If I was to do that and do that and do that, 
and then make it bigger. There you go, how's that? Is that all right? Is that better? There you go, right. So I can switch to that when I need to and hopefully you can see things a little bit more. You can see the icons though, can't, can't read any text. Maybe you can read the text now. Maybe, I mean, I can't really zoom in anymore because of the characters that I've got, but there we go. Right, I just need to remember to switch between the two, which will be that one and that one, and I just need to switch that off like that. There you go, right. Anyway, where were we? That was just the start, that was the setup, which is taking a deep breath and getting a drink of water. I forgot to refresh my water. Yeah, I've not trained Loki to get water yet. I need to be doing that. Right, objective updated, confront the thieves. So we, fought, we saw these, these ne'er-do-wells breaking into this tomb, uh, and I think that's where we need to go. And it is now our turn. So each hero basically gets to activate. Uh, and when you activate, you can do two actions. So we're in the action phase. Uh, and you can do two actions, which may be the same action twice. Traveling is an action where you can move to an adjacent uh, location. Attacking or interacting. I can't attack at the moment because there's nothing to attack. But I think we're going to do Bilbo first. Now, doesn't Bilbo get... Yeah, so Bilbo, when he interacts, he can look at the top card of his deck. And if it's a card with a leaf symbol on, gain one inspiration. So I think that's what we're going to do. I think Bilbo is going to go first. Uh, can read the text now, you're zoomed. Cool. Right, okay. I just need to switch back to the other map when we actually start moving around a bit. Which is, which is now. So Bilbo is going to, which one is it? Is it that one? Yeah, Bilbo is going to move as his first action into here. And then his second action is to interact. You can interact with basically any of these tokens. Uh, and he's going to interact with that token. One thing that's quite cool about this game is on the app itself, you can zoom in, you can turn around, you know, do whatever, is you can tap these and look at them at any time. So it's only an action if you, if you look at the arrow. So you can actually have a look at these things just to remind yourself what they are before you actually do something. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be interacting, but before I interact, look at the top card of your deck. Oh, look at it. Ah, right, okay, and it does have a leaf symbol on, so I gain one inspiration, but all I did was look at it. I don't actually draw it or discard it or anything like that, so I know I have a card with a leaf on the, on the top. Uh, I keep calling it a leaf. Let's call it by the right name. What is the right name? Tests. Um, fate. That's it. It's a fate icon or a leaf. So we're interacting. So you note the garb mimics that of the Breelanders, but their accents are varied. These are not merely local riffraff. You pause and consider what is your best approach. Hmm. So I can say, well met friends. I could speak up. Oh, sorry. Sneak up and eavesdrop, which is very in theme with Bilbo's but he's not a burglar, actually. He's a hunter, isn't he? Or he can say, step away from the tomb or else. Well, I don't know. I think... I mean, they're, they're going into a tomb. And their accents are varied. They're not, they're not from round here. So I think Bilbo is going to be uh, brave. And he's going to say, step away from the tomb or else. A woman steps forward, foreign tattoos up her arms and across her face. You lost, she quips, snarling at your threat. Test might. Okay, so Bilbo's gone up and threatened them, but actually that probably wasn't the best thing for him to do, um, because of course he's just a little hobbit with little legs. So he's not very threatening, but he's going to anyway. So we're testing might. Now my might is two, so I reveal the top two cards. Okay. There we go. So we have drawn one success and one fate icon. 
Now, whenever you draw a fate icon, you can spend an inspiration to turn that fate icon into a success. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend that inspiration. So I actually have two successes. Now, this is one of those open-ended tests. It didn't have a specific value that I needed to beat. I just put in that I had two successes and we'll see what happens. The group is ready to stand their ground, though their resolve is shaken. Someone was sure to come after us eventually, the woman growls, drawing her sword. As you suspected, these are the thieves that you seek. There you go. Discard the person token. Right. Your enemy shows no sign of mercy nor any inclination that they will accept the same in return. With malice in their eyes, they raise their weapons, ready to defend what they have stolen. Place two ruffians, as indicated. Uh, Winston's here. Uh, Coffee Maker 1978 is here. Best game of 2019. Cool. Two ruffians. Now, unfortunately, these figures aren't painted yet because I've been busy. Where are the ruffians? Um, but I have bought some paints. I have um, watched some of Sarastro's painting videos. I've actually bought some special paints just for these because uh, I do want to paint them. Although I'm painting my copy of Cloudspire at the moment. Right. Two ruffians as indicated. Objective updated, defeat the ruffians. So that is my new objective, is to defeat the ruffians. Now, Bilbo has already had his two actions. So that is Bilbo done. So I think Legolas is going to come running in to save the day. Yeah. Uh, Bilbo was always a bit overly brave. Yes. <laughs> I'm playing him as a hunter, even though, yeah, his, his might isn't particularly good. So, yeah, I don't really want to leave Bilbo on his own. So Aragorn is going to spend first action to travel. And then the second action, to attack. Now, when you attack, um, you attack an enemy group, and it is one group of two ruffians, and you choose which item you want to attack with. So I am going to attack with the sword. So you have to choose an item to attack with. Um, it must have a stat icon in the upper left corner, which it does. It's might. Um, it's within range. It's a melee attack. Yeah, so basically you do you do a combat test. Um, and an attack, do I have to press that? Yeah, I think I do. So they've each, the two ruffians, and they've each got five health. You can't see that because, there you go, but there you go. Two ruffians, five health each. In fact, I'm just going to put that over Bilbo while we're doing this. Um, so yeah, basically I just test might. So my might is three, so I'm testing three. One, two, three. Now that's terrible. That is really terrible because it's one success, but I've drawn two fate. If I had any inspiration, I could have converted those into successes. And if I'd have drawn no successes, I could have used my time of need. So as it is, that is literally, that's one success. So all I can do is I can use that one success on my sword to do two hits. So what I do is I press that. Uh, and I just do two hits. If it had any of these special abilities, I would do that, but I don't, so I click apply. Apply two hits, confirm. Can enemy attack? So every time you attack an enemy, is it every time you attack or the first time you attack? I think it's the first time you attack an enemy in a round, it can attack back. I'm just going to check that. Damage and fear, last stands, additional rules, enemies, provoking enemies. No, it didn't provoke an enemy. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? If the enemy is not defeated, it regains all of his armor and sorcery. Uh, the enemy group can attack if it's in the hero's space or an adjacent space if it had ranged. If the enemy can attack, the hero selects the yes button and resolves an attack. So it's attacking me back. You stare with a steely resolve as your foe advances with a with practiced swings of a club. Right. So I'm, I'm going to be taking three physical damage and one fear. Um, but I can do a test of agility to try and negate it. So I do an agility test and every success, I believe, cancels one of those damages things. Don't forget the move action. You can move two spaces. Oh, I'd forgotten that. Thank you very much, Matt Venn, 78. So actually, you can move, and in the middle of the move, do an action and move on. 
So Bilbo could have ended up here. So yeah, let's do that. Yeah, thank you very much. Bilbo's going to do that, interact, and then run away, like a big, uh, uh, like a big scaredy thing. Anyway, what we're doing? We're testing agility. Oh, one success. Two successes. Excellent. Right. So two successes means I can cancel two of that damage, but I still take more. So what damage do I want to cancel? Well, let's let's take one of each. Yeah, let's suffer one, uh, one damage and one fear. So whenever you take damage, um, you basically draw a card from the appropriate deck. Each enemy will only, will only attack back once. Yeah, I thought so. The app handles it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to reveal a damage card and put it face up. So I've got a damage. Uh, let's put this back over here. And let's go back to this camera view here. There you go. So I have these stacks. I have my damage stack and I have my fear stack and I'm going to draw a damage card. Let's just give them a bit of a shuffle first because I like shuffling cards. Now these are not sleeved yet. I really should sleeve these. Although they're pretty good quality cards. So one damage, which is not face down damage, otherwise I could have prevented it. And it is flip this card face down. So that is just one damage, which I'm going to put here, I think. And then the fear. Some of these have other effects. Discard two prepared cards or suffer two face down damage and then discard this card. Well, I don't want to discard these. So I think I'm going to suffer two face down fear. Am I? Yes. And then discard this card. Right. So that gets discarded and I suffer two face down fear. Okay, so I've taken one damage and two fear, but my fear limit is six because of my travel garb. Right, okay. And then they are now exhausted, which means Aragorn can actually move out. So remember, you can move, um, sleeve them, you shuffle them constantly. Yes, I did actually look for some sleeves earlier on today, but couldn't find any in the house that were the right size. So I think that's it. I think that is my go done. We've had two actions with all of the heroes. So the next phase of the game is the shadow phase where the enemies will move and attack. And I think what you do is you press that button and you say end the action phase. And I say yes, end the action phase, shadow phase. So each of the enemies will do something. Oh, but the threat increases first. So you have, they have this thing in the game called threat and it will go up. And when the threat reaches the next bar, something bad happens, which is 15. Oh, they didn't do anything because they were exhausted. Ah, yeah, that's handy. Right, each hero resets their deck and then scouts two. So resetting your deck is basically shuffling the discards back into the deck and then we scout two. But because of Aragorn, we actually get to scout three. So one, two, three. Ooh, I've not played Aragorn before. So we have Thorongil, which is a knowledge card. And I'm preparing one of these. Oh, I should have done that. I should have done the Endless Melody. Yeah, sorry, I meant to do that. At the end of my turn, I was going to discard that to prepare that, which would have got me an inspiration. I'm going to shuffle that in. Yeah, apologies for that. I did mean to do that. And the third one is... Oh, it's a weakness card. Now, weakness cards in this game don't have any bad effect. They just do nothing. Um, but that's going to go to the bottom of the deck. Absolutely. What's going to happen with these? Which of what of these am I going to prepare? I'm going to prepare this one. Because that allows me, whenever I test, to discard this card to test Wisdom instead. And Aragorn's Wisdom is really good. So that I'm going to put on top of the deck because I know it's got a Fate icon on. So Bilbo resets. He should have gone in the discard pile as well. Uh, yes, hello Adam. Thank you very much for, for joining in. Hope you're 
managed to get some sleep. One, two, three. And we have, uh, we have another pre precise strike. So I could actually take these precise strikes and just go in there and whack these guys. Yeah, let's do that. And I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put these two on top because they've got a success icon, an icon and a fate icon. Yeah, we're gonna do that. There you go. That is the scouting done. Continue action phase. Step one of the action phase, have a bit of water. Step two, take turns. So yeah, I think we might move back in now that Bilbo the Hunter has got these strike three cards. So when you attack, discard it to add three hits. Uh, I'm just going to make this, because we're zoomed in a bit, it's a little darker. I'm just going to up the brightness a bit on this one. There you go. That's a bit better, isn't it? Drop the contrast down a bit. There we go. Right. So, yeah, I think that's what we might do. Yeah, let's do it. Right, so Bilbo's going to go first. He's going to choose the move action, move one. And then I can do my other action, and then I can move another one afterwards. And we are going to attack. So we're going to attack. He's going to attack with a dagger. Now, a dagger uses wit as a skill, which is four. Wow. That's pretty good, isn't it? Right, so we're drawing four cards for this test. One success, a fate, another fate, and another fate. So potentially, I could have four successes if I wanted to. But if you look at the dagger, it only has two abilities. And I think each ability can only be used once. Is that right? Uh, Adam's going to go to his gaming group tonight. Oh, dear. Yeah, you're going to sleep. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, people in the chat, if you've watched this, can you only activate each item, each part of an item once? I seem to remember you can only do each part once. Uh, a hero swinging a sword tests that one star can be used to apply two hits and two five hits. To resolve one or more of that item's abilities, each ability can only be resolved once per attack. Found it. It's all right. So there's no point in me having any more than three successes. Uh, and what do we need? So we need to do a total of eight damage. Which I can totally do. By using just the one success from this. And then discarding both of these strikes. They are strike three. So that's going to add three hits. That's going to add three hits. And the success there is used on the dagger, which is two hits. So there we go. That is eight hits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Apply. Apply eight hits. Yes. Which also means the enemies don't get to attack back. Remove the two ruffians. You or a nearby hero gain one inspiration. Well, Bilbo's the one that did the thing. So I think Bilbo should have the inspiration. There you go. But it's quite nice that you can give it to other people. Let's get rid of those. Right. Sudden movement draws your eye. To your surprise, a goblin breaks cover and sprints away, disappearing into a wall of brambles. You follow with haste and find, beyond the thicket, a wide valley dotted with a few ruins, but no sign of the creature. Lore increases by one. Now, lore is kind of experience points that you spend between adventures, but you need, like, loads of it. So we've got one lore. There we go. We need tile 209B. It appears everybody in the chat isn't sleeping well. This is the people who don't sleep well stream. Because, uh, yeah, I had my cats wake me up this morning way too early. Vicky was staying away at her sister's last night, so the cats were very confused. Very confused. 209B. Where is 209B? What does it look like? It's that. Is that that one? Yep. 209B. So that's going here. Hang on. 
Have I got these right? I think I might have got this attached wrong. Yeah, I've got this attached wrong. That shouldn't be there. It should be there. Yeah, that's it. I had it attacked wrong. Easy to do, he says. I've done it before. I know I've done it before. Bilbo the Killer Hobbit. Yes. There you go. Right. So we've attached that. We now have the map as it should be. Oh, and 101A, which is this little fella. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And 203A. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle, this. I mean, they do give you a lot of tiles in this game. 203A, there you go. It's good because you can have all sorts of weird map configurations. 203A, yep, that's right. Okay, exploration tokens. You'll basically get an exploration token whenever you move onto any one of the spaces within that particular area. What has drawn such a creature here? Far, far beyond the reach of any orc stronghold. Its armour bore resemblance to that of Mount Gram, far to the north. But far to the north does that mountain stand. A dark alliance has been formed, indeed, for such a creature to be summoned here. You must find tracks leading to the enemy's lair to continue. Search the surrounding area will yield the clues and tracks you need. Tracks needed three. So that is our new objective. Find three tracks by searching around all of this stuff. So Bilbo still has one movement left. Uh, I think we're going to ignore the, uh, the picket fence and we're going to move it into there. Now, I remember that the threat increases more based on how many of these unexplored areas you have. And we have a lot of unexplored areas. So I think Aragorn is just going to go around and do a bit of exploring. I should put them in the discard pile. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Bilbo will be feeling guilty. Nah, they attacked me first. It's not my fault. Your Honour. Right. Yeah. So Aragorn, first action will be to move to here. So whenever you move into an area for the first time, I believe you press it. Uh, do you want to explore? Yes. Uh, wind brushes over the grass, making the wood of an old gibbet creak ominously. Discard the exploration token and gain one inspiration. There you go. And now it will tell us what is in the area. Uh, the ground royals and shifts beneath the surface, creating a dangerous expanse. Place a threat token, as indicated. Now, threats are bad because they will generate threat as well. And they're a bad thing that you need to go and deal with. Also, ah, your journey continues. So I've got a second movement point. Do I want to move here and get rid of this threat? Although it won't get rid of it, will it? No, it will. Yeah. I could move there and then interact with it and see what it is. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, but then we're split up. No, we kind of want to stay together. So Aragorn's going to do his second movement point to move into there. Explore. Uh, the forest is thick with trees and a single hut hides among them. Discard the exploration token. Gain one inspiration. That's a common thing. Every time you pick one of these tokens up, it's basically the same. It's just a little bit of different flavour. As your journey continues, there are many opportunities to learn about the rich history of this area. Place a search token as indicated. This will basically get you law, I think. I think that's what these, uh, when you find information. Okay, so Aragorn has done his move. He's now going to interact with this. Uh, glittering bits of stone litter the ground underfoot. So I'm going to search, which cost me an action. You know flint can often be useful in crafting tools or even weapons. Perhaps these are there are large enough pieces to be worth your time. Test wisdom, which he's good at. And if you have a burglar card prepared, add one. Well, I don't. Have I got anything to boost my wisdom? No, I don't think I do. That's fine. 
oh, I've got this song. I forgot about this. Whenever you move into a space, you may discard this skill for you and up to two nearby heroes to each gain one inspiration. I'd have done that. Yeah, I'd have discarded that. Gain an inspiration and gain another inspiration. So we did a travelling song. Okay, right. So we are testing wisdom. So I'm testing wisdom at four. And we have nothing, 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 and nothing. Okay, at which point I am going to get rid of my time of need. If I don't reveal any successes, I can discard this card to convert all fate into successes. So I've basically got three successes. One, two, three. Let's see what the app says. Not only do you find sizable chunks of flint hidden in the earth, but you find one that has waves of a lighter material in it, almost pearlescent. Suddenly you are reminded of a story about a river you heard long ago. Long ago there was a tree that warred with a river. His roots were sunk deep into soil and stone, and the river fought for passage around his mighty trunk. But the river carried a secret. Gain one inspiration then discard this search token. Unfortunately, I am at my limit of inspiration. I thought that might happen. Um, I discard the search token, but I don't get an inspiration because I am at my limit. So it was a bit silly for me to use that inspiring song, but then never mind. Uh, there is more to the story. You are sure of it, but you cannot remember the rest just now. See, I've played this game four or five times and I've never had that. So that is a bit different, but I didn't get anything from it other than inspiration that I couldn't take. Oops, right. That is Aragorn done, so that is the end of the action phase. We now have the threat, the shadow phase, and we're going to get lots of threat because of these. It's it's basically it's two per player and then one for each of these, so that's eight. That is going to pop. No, nope. we're at 14 threat. Rally phase. So reset the deck, and we both benefit from Aragorn's scouting bonus. Oh, I'm enjoying this again. I, w I definitely want to play this more. And I know I've said that with a lot of games. It's just finding the time. Um, but as I say, if if things go well with the Patreon campaign for the rest of this month or January, then I might make this a regular once a month thing. But even then, it's going to take me a year to play it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's quite scary. Because I think there's 14 or 15 scenarios in the, in the first campaign. Right, what have we got here? Uh... See, it's not just which card do I want, it's it's which card do I want on top of my deck. I'm going to take Wanderer, and I'm going to put that on the bottom, and that on top. Okay, Bilbo, reset deck. Yeah, I do like the card mechanic in this game. Because it's, it isn't just roll to resolve. It's, it's it's interesting choices with what you do with the cards and where you put them. Okay, so <coughs> kind of want to put this on top because it's got a success on it. Get rid of that hair. It's not mine. Uh, okay, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that on the bottom of the deck. There we go. Right, so we've done scouting. That is the rally phase done. It is now the action phase of round three. Um, let's just have a look at this token again. This was faint as a whisper, this area smells familiar. Do we want to encounter this while we're here or does Bilbo want to go at exploring? Bilbo could get, go down here and sort out this threat on his own. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> so Bilbo's first action is to move. Um, and second action is to interact with the with the threat. Let's cancel that. Yeah, so we are interacting with this, which means I look at the top card of my deck. If it has a fate on it, it doesn't gain one inspiration. In fact, I knew that because I put it there. That was a bit silly, wasn't it? 
Right, the ground roils and shifts beneath the surface, creating a dangerous expanse. Now, let's think about this. Ground shifting beneath the surface. It's probably going to be something like an agility test, and his agility is three, so he's probably the better character for it. Let's do it. Sometimes the theme can actually give you a bit of a hint as to what the test is going to be. And this time I got it wrong. Um, it's might. The rocks underfoot shake as to if to throw you off, but somewhere at the centre of this quake you tense. You sense the answer to the turmoil. Test might. His might is not good. Oh, excuse me. If you are a dwarf, convert all fate into successes. I am not a dwarf. So I am testing might, and my might is only two. There we go. So we've drawn two of those. So I am going to spend an inspiration to convert that fate into a success. So I've basically got two successes. Let's see what that does. You ride out the violent quake, desperate to maintain your footing. When the crashes cease, you are left with a newfound determination in your quest. Gain one inspiration or become, de or become determined and then discard this threat token. So determined is like a status. When you test, you may discard this boon to discard any number of cards from the test and reveal that many additional cards. I'm going to become determined. So that goes, they go, that goes, we have dealt with the threat. Yeah, so that's Bilbo done. So Bilbo is determined. Uh, at the end of your turn, you may discard this skill to gain one inspiration or scout one. Yep, let, let's do that to scout one. Which basically means reveal a card and put it straight into my ready area. Okay, Aragorn. What's Aragorn going to do? Uh, well, the first thing he's going to do is move. So he's going to move to here, which is this area. Explore, yes. And after you explore a tile, I can scout one. Uh, a gentle hill rises above you. Sloping up to a single high perch built upon built in an old oak, a bandit gang might make such use of such a lookout perch, but so might anyone hunting bandits. Discard the exploration token and gain an inspiration, which I can't have. Ah, oh, such a waste. Um, because I've explored, you or a nearby hero may scout one, which I'm going to. Right, high in a tree, you see a shoddy platform crafted from old lumber. The vantage point might make it easier to spot the tracks of the thieves. That's there. And also, a single shaft of light illuminates a low area where a battle was fought long ago, painting it in vibrant hues. Place a search token there. Your journey continues. Right, that's my first movement. So I think while I'm here, I'm going to do a thing there. No, I'm going to do a second movement to here, and then I'm going to do a thing there. Yeah, let is, let's search the single shaft of light. Passing through the low area, you stumble upon an ancient corpse, nothing remaining but bone and rusted metal. Its sword is planted into the ground beside it, its hand still on the hilt. Test spirit. Now, my spirit is a bit rubbish, but I have unyielding spirit which is a card which says, whenever you test spirit, you may discard this card to add a success. I only need one, so I'm just going to test normally. Okay, we have a success, so I've passed without needing to do any skills. Here lies a wanderer such as yourself, strong and vigilant to the end. Become determined or gain one inspiration. Well, I can't have any more inspiration, so I am also going to become as determined as Bilbo. Then discard this search token. Uh, that's there, isn't it? Okay, done. I think we're done. Bilbo's done his two thing. Aragorn's done his two thing. We are done. It is the shadow phase. Not had any more Gribblies turn up yet, but it's still early days. Now, we are going to pop that threat. It is going to go up. So we've gone beyond 15, which means something happens. From a nearby tree line, you hear the warble of an unfamiliar bird. Then, without warning... Arrows whistle through the air around you. Each hero tests agility, two, and each hero who fails suffers two face down damage. So, first of all, Aragorn, testing agility. Uh, 
one. I got two successes. I needed two. So Aragorn is okay. Didn't need to use any of my cards. Um, Bilbo, his agility is three. One, two, three. And I can discard this. Yeah, let's discard that. Turn that into that. Done. So both of the characters tested, both of the characters avoided the arrows, didn't take any damage. Rawr. Place one Orc Hunter on the indicated space. So we need an Orc Hunter, which is this one, which goes ah, right where Aragorn is. And a Goblin Scout. Goblin Scout is there. Right, rally phase. Now the characters are not adjacent. So Aragorn is re going to reset his deck and then draw, uh, oh, sorry, reveal three cards. What have we got? Honed Agility, Undying Might, and Strider. Well, let's take Strider because we are about, I'm going to put those on top, we are about to get into a fight. So that'll be useful. So Bilbo is just resetting his deck and then drawing two. One, two. What have we got? We have another precise strike and we have well nourished. Yeah, I'm going to take the precise strike because I don't need that because it allows me to flip fear face down. So yeah, we don't need that. Right. Action phase. So Aragorn is in the same area as the orc, so we should just attack it. Now, where is the orc? It's that one. We're supposed to give it a banner, actually. I'm not sure why, because there's only one of them on the board. But I'm going to, because that's what it tells me to do. Which banner is it? Oh, no, that icon just means it's ranged. Yeah, OK, doesn't have a banner. But it has one point of armour. So you can't see that because I haven't shown the app, but there you go. So Orc Hunter, it, the grey box is one point of armour. So every time you hit it, uh, one point of damage will be prevented by the armour. So I actually need to hit it for six, but that's fine because I have strike three here. And I have all sorts of other abilities. So I am going to do an attack. Uh, I have a might of three. So let's have a look, see what we get. One, two, distracted. It was distracted by shiny objects. So I could spend two inspiration. Oh, I could use the, dis the determined. Ah. How many do I need? I need six. That's three. And I need two more. Right, I'm going to use the determined. So you may discard this boon to discard any number of cards from the test. I'm going to discard three. And reveal that many additional cards. One, two, three. Aha! Perfect. So two successes there is five hits. And I am going to use the Strider. It is a bit of overkill, but if I don't, it's going to hit me back. So I'm going to discard that. Use all of those. That's eight hits. Okay, it does let me go above. Eight hits. Apply. Dead. Uh, gain one inspiration, which I can't have. <clears throat> I've lost so much inspiration in this game. Right, so that was Aragorn's first go. What are we going to do now? We haven't found any tracks at all. Aragorn's going to go here. And see what we've got. It's going to be an inspiration, isn't it? Yeah. The spray of these waters keeps the banks damp and muddy. Perfect pre for preserving footprints. So again, an inspiration, which you can't have. Uh, looking down a muddy ridge, you notice what may be tracks on the shore. The way down, however, is steep, slippery and bears no clear path. And where is that counter? It's in the area. Your journey continues. 
So you've got one movement left. Uh, depends where we're going to put Bilbo. Because he's probably going to need to stay there. Okay, we'll just leave Aragorn there. We'll do Bilbo. Uh, let's have a look at the health of this orc. Ah, easy. One armor, three health. It's not an orc, it's a goblin. So yeah, I think Bilbo is going to move. He's going to attack. He's using his dagger, so that is wit. So he's drawing four cards. I only need one success because I'm drawing three. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, so one success from there, which is two hits. Discard the, stri uh, the precise strike, which is another three. So one, two, three, four, five. Dead. Probably gain an inspiration. Yep. Basically, every time you explore or kill monsters, you get an inspiration, it seems. That is gone. And then Bilbo's second movement will be to move to here. And that is the end of my go. So we have the shadow phase. And I think the next shadow thing is going to pop as well. Is it? Is it? Yes. An elderly crow perched in the shadow of a dying elm watches you with malicious intelligence. Its incessant cries grow louder and shriller until it erupts into flight and streaks over your head, followed by the cries of more dangerous foes, exclamation mark. Oh, a hungry warg. And this does have a banner. It has that one. Where was it? Ah. Now, I've done this before. I accidentally pressed OK, and I'm not sure exactly where it should be. And there is a way, I think, that you can go back and look. Uh, place one hungry wog on the indicated space. Right, and I missed it. Anybody who's watching this in the chat, is there any way of finding out the bits that you missed because it just says place it on the indicated space where is it yeah place one hungry wog on the indicated space and i can't remember where it was how do i go back there Yeah, I'm not sure. New board order is here. Hello, thank you for joining in. Just at the point where I've... Uh, and I made this mistake last time. So yeah, is there anything I can do to find out where the Hungry Wog should be? I have a feeling it was there. Um, and the problem is I'm not zoomed in on the app. So nobody could actually see it on screen. That's the problem. Nobody could actually see the app at the point I was doing that. I was going to try and get the app on like a separate, separate window somewhere um yeah but i didn't do that so yeah i'm not sure i'm going to put it there although as i say i don't know where exactly it should be but we'll put it there and we'll just move on right we're resetting our decks uh, unfortunately the app was off screen yes but is there any way i can find out i don't think there is i don't think you can go back i think if you miss it then then you've missed it which is yeah I don't think there's anything we can do about that. It's a shame. Three cards. What do we want? Uh, so none of these are ideal. Let's take that one. And let's put these two on top of the deck because they both have fate icons on. Bilbo is resetting and Bilbo is only drawing two cards. One, two. Oh, I forgot that one. Never mind. Um, yeah, again, not ideal. Simple Desires, which is a Bilbo card. Yeah. Not great. I'm going to take Undying Might and I'm going to put that to the bottom of the deck. Right, that is that done. We are now in the action phase again. 
getting really thirsty. Oh. Right, what we're going to do? We haven't found any tracks. We're all a bit rubbish. It's also got some spiky borders around it. Does that mean it's elite? I think it does. It's bloodthirsty. When this group is, uh, when this group attacks, its damage is increased. Right, that, that's a tough group. That is a tough group. Well, it's a group of one hungry warg, but it's still tough. Right, let's have a think. Let's turn that off. And what we're gonna do? What we're gonna do? I mean, you find the tracks by investigating these tokens, and there's one there, and there's one there, and then there's got to be something here. That'll be the three tracks. I don't think these would have the tracks on because these are the ones that were initially laid out. Do I just ignore this wild for now and wander past it? I think we do. Bilbo's going to go first. Going to move into there. We're going to interact with this, which was the high in the tree. So because he's interacting, we look at the top card of the deck. It is a success icon, so we just put it back on the deck. But then Bilbo is going to climb, and it's an agility test. So agility is three. Uh, there is one. Two is nothing. Three is a double fate icon. So I am going to spend two inspiration to turn those two fate icons into successes. So I've got three successes because he's climbing a tree. He doesn't want to fail. You find yourself in a tangle. The very branches you hoped to use instead impeding your advance. You retreat slightly looking for a better path. Gain one inspiration. Okay. So I started but failed. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Right, and then we'll just move to here as a second action. An ancient oak presides over this stretch of hill land and a rocky slope conceals a bear den. Discard that and gain an inspiration, which is what I wanted. And what do we have? We have, uh, as your journey continues, there are many opportunities to learn about the rich history of this area, which is another one of those. So stuff to learn and also, oh, that's it. Okay, so where are these tracks? Hmm. Uh, well, that's Bilbo done. Moved, interacted, failed to climb the tree and moved again. Okay, so Aragorn is going to interact with the slippery slope. It's probably an agility test. Yes, agility. So his agility is two. But before you test, you may discard this skill to test wisdom instead. No, I'm just going to test agility because I have honed agility. I can get plus one success if I want to. So one, two, which I am going to spend two inspiration for to turn that into two successes and discard that for three successes. Is that enough? Halfway down the steep slope, the mud gives way beneath you. Keeping your footing, you slide down with care and come to rest beside the tracks. They are heavy and wide, large enough for man's, for a man's. Strange though it may be, a large number of orcs have travelled down this way. Discard this search token. Is that a track? It's got to be a track, surely. You cast your gaze deeper into the wild. Perhaps the remaining thieves and their allies from Mount Graham are hiding in them their hills. Doesn't say them their hills. I made that up. 305A. Is that this one? Nope. 305A is this one. And that goes on there. Is it going to fit? Is it going to fit? Yes, it's going to fit. Oh, and 207A, which is that one. Oh, that goes there. Mm, might have to zoom out. Can we see all of that? No, we can't see all of that. Right. Oh dear, made a mess. Can we see all of that now? Still no. I'll tell you what, I've made a complete mess over here. Let's just zoom the camera out a bit. There you go, it's near enough. Move these down a bit. And you can move this down a little bit.
Yep, there we go. We're all in. He's good. Where were we up to? Where were we up to? What were we doing? Don't know. Oh, it was Aragorn, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, and 201B, just after I'd reset it. 201B is over there. I think that's where we need to be going. Wow, three exploration tokens. I need to get on it. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, you compare the information you have discovered with what you already know of the region. Seeing no obvious signs of the lair, you begin to surmise that the lair, uh, where the lair may be, and continue your hunt. Law increases by one. One track found. Two tracks left to go. So Aragorn has just interacted. Now he can move into the area with the warg, but then I think you like provoke an attack or something. So I think he's just going to move one, two, and stand here. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We are done. That is the end of the turn. Do I have any abilities or any anything? Don't think I do. What are these cards? These were, these were there. This was there. That was there. I think we're done. Shadow phase. Lots of threat. Uh, right, so the wolf move three and attack Bilbo. So it can... Yeah. He can go to an attack. A warg gives a low, silky growl that sends a chill down your back. Okay, so spirit negates. So I need some successes. I need some successes to cancel this damage. So let's have a look what we have. Have we got anything that boosts spirit? Yes, I have unyielding spirit. So we'll do the test first, which is spirit three. One, two, three. Right, totally could do this. I'm going to discard unyielding spirit. That gives me one success. That card is a, is a success. And these two, along with the two inspiration, is two more successes which means I take no damage. Ha, ha, ha. The shadow deepens, though hope yet endures. Threat increases by seven. Rally phase. Okay, are my two characters near each other? No. Whew. Right, so Aragorn is resetting and scouting three. What have we got? Now, we're going to be wanting to do some fighting next turn. So I think... I think I'm going to put the Travelling Song on top of the deck. I'm going to prepare Unyielding Might. And I'm going to put Time of Need on the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Uh, Bilbo resets the deck. And draws two. So, prepare one of them. Well, I'll prepare Precise Strike, obviously. And I'm going to put that to the bottom of the deck. Because that Precise Strike is going to give me three hits. It's because Bilbo has chosen the Hunter, um, and your deck is made up of cards that are specific to your character, so in this case Bilbo, six basic cards that are the same for every hero, and then the three cards that are for your role. Um, and because Bilbo is a hunter, that's why he has those cards. Right. We are done. We are now ready for the next round. Action phase. I'm very thirsty all of a sudden. I went to sleep last night and I left the heating on. So the house has been really hot all day. And I haven't turned it off yet. So it's still hot. Anyway, enough about my... Uh, leaving the heat on life. Let's crack on. What are we going to do? Are we going to sort this warg out? I think so. I think Aragorn is going to rush in and he's going to blat it. So, first action move. One, two. Second action, attack! Do I have any bonuses? No, I mean, I could discard this to make it four. 
No, I don't want to. I'm just going to do an attack of three, because that is my might skill. I'm attacking with the sword. It's a might test. One, two, three. So I've got two successes there. And I am going to use an inspiration to make it three successes. Because I can't have any more than three. No, I'm going to keep the inspiration. I'm going to discard the Undying Might. So I've got three successes, which is all I can use, because I've only got those two abilities. It's seven attack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Can the enemy attack? Yes. A beast lunges at you, its claws slicing through the air. So might negates. And I'm taking three, two damage and a fear. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, so. Now, my fear, I'm allowed to have six fear. I've already got two. Aragorn's a bit scared. Okay, so I am going to spend an inspiration to convert that fate into a success. So I, I, I negate one of those things, and I am going to negate... I'm going to negate one of the damage. So I suffer one damage and one fear. So the damage is uh, weariness. Flip this card face down. So that's okay. And the fear... Flip this card face down. Gloom. Right, so we've taken... Uh, three fear and two damage. Okay. So Aragorn moved and attacked. It's now Bilbo's go. Bilbo is going to attack, uh, which is going to be a wit test of four. Is this going to work? Yeah, I'm totally going to kill it. Uh, so one, two, three... Four. And then I'm going to discard Unyielding Might to give me an extra success, which is three successes, which on the dagger is five hits with Pierce, which is total overkill. Because the Pierce gets through the armour and it is dead. You or a nearby hero gains an inspiration and I'm going to give the inspiration to Aragorn. No, we're going to give it to Bilbo. Right, done. That's the warg gone. And that is Bilbo's first action was to attack. He's got two moves left. He's got a second action left, so he might as well move. Let's go into here and see what we get. Actually, no, I am going to give that inspiration to Aragorn because Bilbo is about to get some more. Leaves rustle and someone ducks into a dense thicket. You are on the trail of the bandits. Convert that into that. Right, what's in this area? A thicket sits quiet and still, its shifting shadows possibly concealing tracks within. Which is that. And then Bilbo continues his move into there. Uh, peering through the brambles, you find a boggy lowland. A rustle of movement draws your attention to the bulrushes. I'm just basically storing up this uh, inspiration and getting rid of the... Um, the exploration counters. Uh, more rich history stuff to investigate, which is there. And then a patch of bulrushes hides some tracks, which is there. Or well, may hide some tracks. Your journey continues. We are done. End the action phase. Yes, no enemies on the board, which is good. But the shadow phase, it's going to move up by five. Is that right? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, didn't get to 40. And again, the app's off screen. You missed that happening. Right, so we reset and we scout and we go on to the next round. And I have no water. So I'm getting thirsty. Um, more live streams coming to the channel. Was tomorrow I'm doing another solo playthrough. Again, uh, as part of the Patreon drive. Uh, I'm doing assembly at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon it's like a 20 minute game so it'll probably take me about an hour and then three live streams on friday right what have we got here traveling song traveling song and undying might 
Well, I'm going to take Undying Might and I'm going to put those two to the top of the deck. So they are guaranteed successes. Uh, Bilbo, on the other hand, is over there on his own. Miles away from anyone. And remember, if you're not... If you haven't played this game, this is Scenario 1 of the campaign that comes with the core set. And Mission 1, which I think is not that difficult. Uh, I'm going to take this one. After you prepare this skill, gain one inspiration. Oh, and I'm going to put that on the bottom of the deck. Characters are quite asymmetrical in the way that they work. And because you can have any character with any role, it does change the way that the characters play. Which is quite cool. Right, we've done that. We're in the action phase. It's finding these tracks. I've got to find three tracks, and I've got to try and find out where they are. I am leaving behind some of these tokens, which could potentially be stuff. Uh, but I think Aragorn's going to go first, and he's going to interact with this. Where was that tree? The tree was there, which I half climbed and then wandered off. So we're going to interact here with this. This is a vantage point. So we're definitely having that. The land is beautiful. You can see by the hills and valleys that it was shaped in a winding pattern. You are suddenly reminded of a story you heard long ago about a river. Another one. Uh, long ago there was a tree that warred with a river. Yada, 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 yada. That's the same as we had before. Or is it more? Its dripping song could be heard by the river, but not by the tree who so enjoyed the wind through its branches and would not listen to the earth. So gain an inspiration and discard the token. I mean, it's nice, the flavour, but ultimately... That is just, discard this token, gain one inspiration, and some flavour text. The ending to this story eludes you for now, but perhaps you will be reminded of the rest later. Okay, so we've remembered two parts of this story, which is quite cool. Maybe something will happen when we remember the third part. Uh, right, then Aragorn is going to actually discard this. So he's going to discard Thorongil. Uh, which allows him to sprint one, which is during your turn, discard this to move one space. I'm going to move to there, which means I can do my second action on interacting with that, which is the tree. So we test agility. And my agility is two. Oh, he's only two. He's not very good at that, is he? Oh, well. One, two. Oh, I did put two successes on top of my deck. Pulling yourself onto the rickety structure, you gain an exceptional view of the area. Gain one inspiration and then discard the search token. Can I have it? Yes, I can. Now, you might think, how's that happened? Because I got three successes on climbing that tree earlier and I didn't climb it. And now I've got two and I did climb it. It's because the app is actually remembering how many successes you've had on each test. And it adds them up cumulative. Doesn't make sense thematically for this particular one. But it's quite cool that the app is remembering all of that stuff. So we have an exceptional view. What does that do? We've found some tracks. With the clues gathered and the enemies you have faced, you begin to fear that this is no lair of exiles and lowlifes. What you are closing in on is a stronghold of the enemy, fledgling though it may be. Your fears, unfortunately, have proved true. A darker purpose and master is being served here. Law increases by one. Tracks needed now one. That is Aragorn's turn done. Interacted, did the sprint, interacted. Now Bilbo's go. Bilbo's going to interact with that, which means we look at the top card of the deck. It is a success, so we just put it back. And then we're going to interact with this token here, which is the several trail signs surreptitiously tucked into the landscape. Using what you know about trail signs, you attempt to translate the, uh, the unfamiliar code. Uh, we're testing wisdom, which he's not very good at wisdom. He's a bit thick. If you have a Pathfinder card, add one. Yeah, not very good at this at all. But I can get a success from Ancient Wisdom. So we are testing two. And we have drawn one success. And oh, I can do it. So I'm going to spend an inspiration to turn that into a success. That's two. And I'm going to discard Ancient Wisdom. So we've got three. Might not be enough. We will see. Ah, this row of stones must be warning of a river that ran through this area long ago. You suddenly remember a story that you heard long ago about a river. So it's the same as before, but now 
Soon the river carved out enough stone that the tiny spring was freed from the soil. With the river's strength and the spring's patience, patience together, the tree realised he would soon have nowhere to stand. He begged for mercy. The river gave none. Law increases by three. Again, law is experience points that you will spend to upgrade your equipment, which doesn't make sense, at the end of the campaign, at the end of the scenario. Uh, now that you have remembered the full story, you struggle to find the moral in it, if there even is one. You suppose remembering is enough for now. There you go. So we found the three parts of that story and we gained three lore, basically. Um, now, I haven't got any free movement, so I am just going to move to here and we're going to explore. A wide path and crumbling ruin mark an abandoned post of trade. Let me get that and put that there. How many can I have? Oh, loads. Six. A patch of wild plants has sprung up here, filling the air with the smell of fresh growing things. Place the search token as indicated. Now, I've got one movement left. Where am I going to go? Should I come back on myself or should we go there? Let's go there. Let's get, let's get Bilbo wandering off on his own onto the part that you can't actually see. There you go. Bil Bilbo is off over there. I'm going to have to zoom out again on the camera, aren't I? Yeah, there you go. Bilbo's over there. Tidy them up. Put that out of the way. Put that there. There we go. Keep shuffling things around. Aragorn's pretty scared and pretty battered and Bilbo's absolutely fine. <laughs> Bilbo's not in any, he's not taking any damage, he's not scared. He's going to Aragorn, what are you on about? Everything's fine. I think we're done. So, shadow phase. No enemies on the board. Threat increases by four, which reaches the next threshold. If we ever get to 64, uh, it, we lose. As the last sliver of the setting sun dips out of sight, a long hungry howl sweeps across the valley. The feeling of being watched intensifies. Surely no ordinary thieves would be so allied with the darkness. Each hero suffers three face down fear, but spirit negates. So Aragorn first. Aragorn has a spirit of two and I can add a success by discarding this card. So there's one, there's two. No successes there, but I am going to spend two inspiration for two successes and I'm going to discard Unyielding Spirit for three successes which negates all of the damage because he's already quite scared. Right, Bilbo. Uh, what's these cards? Oh, that's there. Um, Bilbo has a Spirit of three. So one, two, three. Uh, okay, so we're going to spend two inspiration. No, we're not. It's only fear. I'm going to spend one inspiration to cancel one of it. So I take two face down fear. And I could spend an inspiration to cancel it, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to suffer two face down fear because it's face down. It literally has no other side effect other than just being a face down card. Uh, and Bilbo's got a fear like resistance of seven. So he's fine. We're all okay, but it's going dark. Oh, place an orc marauder on the indicated space. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you on the app. Okay, there. Just in case I accidentally fear. Now what's an orc marauder? Is that that one? Yeah, it's that one. Ugly. Ah, that's it. Just an orc marauder, miles away from anywhere. Right, reset the decks. So we've still got one track to find. How are we doing for time? It's half five. Wow. I thought this might be an hour. I'd forgotten how long this takes. But again, I am kind of remembering the rules as I go, but I think I'm doing all right. Right, let's have a look at the three cards, see which one we want. Um, now, we're nowhere near any enemies yet but we're going to be at some point or are we oh gift of men during your turn you may discard this skill to discard a fear i'm having that i'm totally having that that's going on top of the deck that's going on the bottom of the deck right that's aragorn scouting done 
Bilbo scouting. Is Bilbo still determined? What he's determined for, I don't know. Running off on his own by the looks of it. Uh, last message we had in the chat was from Matt ages ago. So that was 25 minutes ago. Please let me know if you're in the chat, if you're still watching this and everything is working fine. I'm actually just going to switch over to the YouTube view to see if anything's on there. But yeah, hopefully it's working fine. Uh, and we're scouting two for Bilbo. What have we got? The road goes ever on. Mm, that's quite useful for movement. Yeah, I'm going to take that and I'll put that one on top. Right. Action phase. <sighs> Getting really thirsty. It's like I've been eating lots of salty food. I just feel... Uh, Charlie's got to go. Thank you for joining in. Jeff says it's all good on the Facebook chat. John's still here. Josh is still here. Excellent. Right. Well, I hope you're enjoying it. We'll see where we are. Actions. What are we going to do? What's our plan? We need to find... We've got one more track to find. And I think that's around here somewhere. So we're going to do Bilbo first, down at the end, on his own. On his Todd. Patch of wild plants. Yeah, let's search that. Oh, he's interacting. So I'll look at the card. It is a leaf. So I get an inspiration. There you go. The surrounding area is filled with all sorts of wild plants. Broad leaves, tall stalks and tiny flowers sway in the breeze. Test wit. Okay, we're definitely going to test wit. So we are a wit of four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we have two successes and I am going to spend an inspiration to make it three successes. One, two, three. There are so many herbs. You see dill, mustard, sage, ramps and wild onion. Carefully skirting some poison oak, you gather a few things to prepare with tonight's supper. You and nearby heroes collectively gain four inspiration. Okay. Well, that's a bit of a waste because there's only me. There's only Bilbo that's nearby and he can only have another three. Ah, it's not too much of a waste though. He's got six inspiration. He's all, he's fully inspired and determined. That's that gone. That's his first action. Second action is going to move two to there. Uh, and then I think Aragorn's going to move. Yeah, let's, let's go here. One, two, and we'll interact there. What was that? That was a thicket. Ah, possibly concealing tracks within. Peering into the dark depths of the thicket, you find your eyes locked with another's. An orc's eyes, dark pits of contempt and hatred, gaze out at you. You have found an ally of the thieves. Test wisdom. I'm good at wisdom. So that's one success. Nothing. Two successes. Three successes. Wow, I think there's only three successes in the whole deck. Which sounds good, but that's those cards gone. You step into the thicket and the orc stumbles back, caught in the tangle of branches. With a flash of steel, it lashes out, then breaks away, leaving a hint as to the, to the direction of the lair. It has dropped its knife, however, and you pick it up for inspection. The dark, brittle metal is the cheap craft of Mount Graham. Why and how are these creatures so far from their vile and distant home? Law increases by one. Discard the search token. At last you have located the hidden lair of your enemy, nestled in an old ruin. There. I pointed to a place that you can't see. There. Faint silhouettes of orc sentries dot its high, ruined towers, and you see more movement within. Aware of your nearness, they scramble to ready a defence. For now, all that remains is to devise a way in, without their notice, before these defences are prepared. Law increases by one. Search token there. Final objective, infiltrate the lair. With the knowledge of your destination, you observe outposts and patrols that until now were hidden from your notice. Ah. Place two ruffians on the indicated space. Uh, man with spiky club. Other man with spiky club who looks very similar to the first man with spiky club. Ah, right next to Aragorn. Hello. And is that it? Yeah, that's it. 
Now, whose go was that? That's it. Ar Bilbo did his, Aragorn did his. We are done. End the action phase, yes. Shadow phase. So first of all, the Orc Marauder. Uh, the Orc Marauder moves one and attacks Bilbo, or the nearest hero. Well, it can't, so we say no target. At which point instead, it howls a fierce war cry and it moves two. One, two. It's going to be ages before that gets there. Next, move two and attack Aragorn, or the closest hero. So they can move two and attack Bilbo. But do they? Because Aragorn is in their space. I don't think they would walk away. Let's just check. Prepared skills. Right. The enemy group moves up to the indicated number of spaces towards the targeted hero, taking the shortest path if possible. Oh, it says, it says Aragorn anyway. Attack Aragorn or closest hero. Yeah, I'm getting mixed up. I thought it said Bilbo. I'm clearly getting tired. No coffee. Oh, no, I did have a coffee today. I had a coffee this morning. It's worn off. Right. So we're going to attack. Attack! Ugh. Your foe's curved blades glint with the promise of your demise. Might negates. I can add a success from this. So I, I will be doing that no matter what. Uh, I'm doing three. So one, two, three. Now then, I've already got one success. That is another success. And I'm going to spend an inspiration to have a third success. So I've cancelled three of them. And I'm going to take a damage. Yeah. And the damage is... Flip this card face down. So he's taken three damage and three fear. Has our, has our Aragorn. Oh, I've got this. During your turn, you may discard this card to discard a fear. Oh, I, I would have done that. forgot about that. Right, we're done. That's the attack. Yeah, we negated some of it. So that's good. Uh, threat increases by four. Right, okay. So we are almost... Can I press on that? And will it tell me how many we're on? Maybe not. But we're close to the next threshold. If you have a look at the bar at the cross at the top... When it gets to 48, the next event is going to happen. So we're scouting two. And again, the heroes are still not next to each other. So none of that helping each other shenanigans. So one, two, three for Aragorn. And Aragorn now has no skills prepared. So we're going to take Strider because we are going to be attacking. That is basically an extra three hits. And these two... I'm going to put that one on top and one on the bottom because I, I know that I have one inspiration. So that will convert one of them to a success. Bilbo resets the deck. Have I said how much I like this card mechanism? I think I have. So I'll say it again. Oh, it tells you there. 45 out of 64. On the app, I was looking for where it says. It says in the top right. I'm at 45 out of 64. Um, okay. we have right I'm going to oh this is interesting I'm going to put that one on top of the deck because it's got two two fate icons on and I have a whole bunch of inspiration which means we're going to prepare that one so Bilbo is now at his limit of four prepared skills but we're going to be using them this turn because we are going to be attacking these orcs or are we? no because we need to get into there I forgot to put the search token on there that's where we need to be going there, that's where we're going. Right. So we are done. We are ready. It's our go. I'm going to do Aragorn first. And we are going to attack. Oh, they're huge. Which basically means they've got extra health. So it's two eight hit point ruffians, which you can see there on the app. Two eight hit point ruffians. Okay, so let's just put this here for a minute. Sorry, Bilbo, we keep covering you over. So yeah, first action is attack. Might of three. One, two, three. 
Uh, well, that's not great. So I'm going to discard my inspiration uh, to convert one of those into a success, and then I am going to discard the Strider card um, to basically give me four damage, which isn't brilliant. One, two, three, four. Yep. Yeah. Because they're now going to hit me back. Oh, you stare with a steely resolve as your foe advances with a practice with practiced swings of a club. Right. So I'm testing agility to try and negate it. That's one success. Uh, so one success. So I've been. I've right. This is bad. This is bad. What am I going to cancel? I'm going to cancel one of the damage. So I'm taking two damage, which is actually going to kill me. But there's nothing I can do about that. And one fear. Yeah, earlier on I should have taken that as fear instead of damage. Never mind. So I take, I'm going to take the fear first. Oh, Dark Whispers. Keep this card face up and at the end of your turn suffer a fear. Permanently? Wow. So I get a fear constantly because I've got these voices whispering in my head. But whenever I test uh, that one or that one, which is wisdom or wit, I actually get an extra success. So it's good and bad. Mainly bad. But now I am taking two damage. This is a problem. First damage is fever. Discard one inspiration. I haven't got any. And then flip that face down. And then my second damage is... Crushed. Deplete one of your items without resolving its effect. Uh, we don't have any of those items in this scenario. Flip this card face down. Right, I have now taken... Uh, Aragorn has taken five damage and he's only allowed to take five damage. So what you do is you actually press a button called... It's something called a last stand. Uh, let's just have a look. Last stand. After a hero has suffered damage or fear, if they have a number of damage face up or face down equal to their greater than the damage limit, equal to or greater, that hero must perform a last stand. Select the party button in the lower left corner. Right, okay, so we have to do it. So it's Aragorn's last stand. Is this a damage or fear? This is really bad in the app. It says, is it damage or fear? But then they're in the order of fear and damage. It's damage. Right, if you are quick enough, you could press on. So I need to do an agility test of two, and I need one success. This is going to be a problem, because I don't have any inspiration. So, no, no. Fail. You have fallen. Remove your figure from the map. At the start of the next shadow phase, you will fail this adventure. Well... I said earlier on it was going okay. Now it's not. That is it. Aragorn has gone. Aragorn has succumbed to being beaten up by two ruffians. He attacked them, didn't manage to do enough damage, and then fell. He fell. Okay, so basically, at the start of the next shadow phase, you will fail this adventure. It is currently the action phase. So in other words, this is Bilbo's last action can't do anything else. I've got to get in. I've got to get in this turn, otherwise I fail. Which is a bit disappointing. But that's what happens. Do I have any way of moving? Because if I did... Yes, I have. Aha! This might just work. I have this. The road goes ever on. During your turn, you may discard this skill for you and each nearby hero to move up to one space. So the road goes ever on and on, and I'm going to move to there. That will give me, you can't see, but I have just moved into the space where apparently the hideout is. I now get two interactions with that. So the first interaction, I will use Bilbo's ability and reveal the card. And it does have one of those on, so I gain an inspiration, which I can't have because I'm already at six. But at least I know what's on top of my deck. So we're interacting here, which is... The enemy's lair is hidden within an old ruin. All that remains is to, is to devise a way in without their notice. Search. 
Careful to avoid discovery, you scout the area around the old fort. I'm testing wit. This is perfect because Bilbo's wit is excellent. It's four. And I get a plus one success because of this. Oh, well, we might have this. One. Two. Three. Four. Now I have drawn my weakness card. So the weakness card has no effect. That has no effect. I'm going to discard two inspiration to convert that into two successes. I'm then going to discard clever wit to add another one success. So that is four successes. One, two, three, four. Is it going to be enough? Slipping past the last patrol, you find a way into the structure without raising an alarm. The heroes win! You have caught the bandits by surprise and will face the bandit leader on even footing in the next adventure. Lore increases by two and each hero receives four experience points. And we are done. Right, that is going to be it for today. We have done that. What's going to happen now uh, is I've basically got a bit of lore. I can't remember exactly how many. I won't press continue yet, or will I? Yeah, let's do continue. Here we go. So I have seven lore. Now, seven is nowhere near enough. If you have a look at the items that I have in play, it costs 22 lore to upgrade this item. Yeah, 27, 24. So as I mentioned earlier on, you need a lot of lore to upgrade your items. What I do have is four experience points. And with that four experience points, I can buy cards. You click on the app uh, and it basically tells you which cards you can buy. And what I really like about this game is that you can change your mind. If I decide to put that card into my deck and then I decide that I don't like it, I can take that card out of my deck uh, and just, just buy a different one. Um, however, Aragorn has earned four experience points as, I'll show you here, He's earned four experience points. Um, the colour's a bit high, isn't it? Yeah, I've got the saturation turned up a little bit. Anyway, he's earned four experience points as a musician. If Aragorn now switches roles to a different role, he will keep that four experience points, but it's only as a musician. So you can actually start multiple roles as the, as the thing goes on. I will be doing that before the next session. Um, when I play again, I don't know. I would like to play again. I might do another one between Christmas and New Year. I'm going, to give a, I'm going to give them a couple of hours each, which is what it's taken me to do this one. Um, but as I mentioned at the start, and I don't want to push it too much, but uh, the next goal of my Patreon campaign is to do more solo videos. And this is one of the games that I will probably end up doing the full campaign of. So if you want to see me do the full campaign of this, if my Patreon reaches the next goal, um, then yeah, I'll be doing more solo playthroughs. And yeah, why not? Let's, let's make this the one. I'll just set aside one day one day a week or every couple of weeks and we'll we'll get it done. Anyway, right, I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you very much uh, to everybody for joining in. I've got a bit of rule book work to do now. Then I've got to make dinner, uh, do some painting tonight. Tomorrow, as I say, I'm doing assembly. So assembly is a little game from Janice and Stuart Wren. It takes about 20 minutes to play or 30 minutes to play. I'm going to be doing that tomorrow at two o'clock in the afternoon as a bit of a break from rule book work. And then Friday is all day streaming. So we're doing Frontier Wars which is a war game style game. So something very different from what I normally cover. Um, but I'm going to be doing that on Friday afternoon. Then we're doing Era, the Medieval Age, which is from Plan B Games and Matt Leacock. So we're going to be doing that at five o'clock on Friday. And then Friday night, Railroad Evolution, which is the expansion set to Railroad Revolution from Watch Your Game. So yeah, four more live streams this week. Again, none of which are sponsored. All of these videos are being done through the Patreon campaign. I'm taking time off work. Uh, which is obviously uh, reducing the amount of money that I'm earning, but I, I wanted to do lots more Patreon content November and December. So yes, thank you very much to everybody joining in. Thank you very much to Jeff, Josh, New Board Order, John, uh, Diglicious was here as well. Thank you very much for joining in. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed it. As I say, I enjoyed playing it. I want to play it more um, and we'll see how we get on. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.
Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.